Um, now, I want to show a couple other events. Another uh, event that people ask questions about are when are a person going to be able to buy property, buy a home, right? Okay. And, you know, I had this question myself, <laughs> so I'm going to use my own chart. <laughs> to, uh, but I made a prediction about this in a classroom setting with students. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I told you that in 1990, I moved from the Midwest, Chicago area, to uh, Southern California. I live in a community called Cardiff by the Sea. It's, uh, I live just about a half mile from the ocean. And um, I wondered if I was ever going to be able to buy property because the property is really, really expensive. Okay. 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 Um, and for a long time, when I was out here, I, I was not in a position to buy property. But uh, looking at my own chara dasha, I noticed that in 2004, I was going to move into my Taurus period. Taurus period. Okay. Which chara karaka does Taurus contain? Yes, the matri karaka, the significator of the fourth house. Right. And it's in a good condition. It's yes. uh, natural, natural benefic in its own sign. Mm -hmm. No real blemish, no real influences on it. There's no Rashi Drishis that are reformed here, either by positive planets or negative ones. So it's just the MK strong in its own sign, right? Mm -hmm. And so I thought to myself, well, if I'm ever going to be able to buy property, this is going to be the period that it would happen. And it just, make a long story short, it just so happened that financially, in terms of money I was making and positions I was in, I started to get in a position to actually buy property. Okay. And uh, um, now this shows you timing in a different sort of way, which is the fourth house of the horoscope. Sagittarius. So it was in Taurus, Sagittarius, okay. that I was, I was able to purchase the home from which I'm talking to you yeah, I see okay that's yeah. great again elegant simplicity right. running the sign period but of course what other physical object does a person what is represented by the fourth house besides home and property vehicle vehicles so mm -hmm. soon after moving on this period I was I, 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 you know bought a BMW and kind of a nice luxury vehicle. wow okay <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> so so it, it, gave, it gave me um both of these. Now, here's a more subtle point. Which house of the horoscope is this? Uh, the Sagittarius, you mean? No, Taurus, major. Ah, okay, ninth house, ninth house. Ninth house. After a couple of years being on this property, I put a temple in my backyard. I okay. built, 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 a, built a small temple. You okay. see the correlation? Ninth house temples, MK yes. there? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Te temple in the home. Temple and house, okay, I see, great. Just, great. Now, this next story I'm going to tell you is one I particularly like because it has to do with a woman friend of mine who really wanted to buy property but didn't think she would ever be in a, a position financially to do so. Okay. Um, and uh, But again, circumstances just sort of came about where it was a possibility but she couldn't qualify. The bank wouldn't didn't, wouldn't give her a, a, a loan, all right? She, okay. There was a certain property that she wanted to buy. She had a very aggressive seller. They were really coming down in price. She really wanted to do it. But uh, when she applied for the bank loan, she was refused. Um, so this was happening. Which is the uh, fourth house of the birth chart? Aries. Aries. And you'll notice that the small, the shortest period that a person that a person can have for a sign period is just one year. Okay. Okay. The longest is when the sign is the Lord of the sign is in the sign, like my Venus and Taurus. It can be twelve years. Okay, I see. Okay. Now look down at Jaradasha, and you can see that she was going to run the Aries. She was running the Aries period from age fifty six to fifty seven. Okay, one year only. Okay. One year only. So this was kind of a window. Right? Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yeah. And this is when she wanted to buy the property. Now, who is the MK in this chart? Who is the MK? Uh, moon, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what sign is it in? Sagittarius. So you can see that just for a one-month period, mm -hmm. she was she was going to be running Aries Sagittarius. Well, what happened? Oh, uh, okay. She, she didn't she didn't qualify for a loan, but she uh, some uh, friend of hers agreed to be the co-signer on the loan. Okay, okay. So she was able to get it. She was able to purchase the property. 
I predicted it. It happened in Aries, Sagittarius. Aries being the fourth okay. house of the horoscope, Sagittarius containing the MK. Wow. So within the one year also, these periods gave wonderful. Well, it did in this case. Yes. Um, now, because I want to, sh I've shown a little bit the use of the divisional charts this way, how you can use Dharakaka in the Vamsha in order to um, predict relationship period giving. You can also use the relevant divisional charts uh, in C Karaka there as well. Okay. This was, uh, which divisional chart has to do with property? Do you know? Yeah, Chatothamsha. D4, okay? Yes, yes. And so this person approached me back in maybe 2016, 17, I forget exactly when. Um, and he was running his Aquarius period. Okay. So just, just, just started his Aquarius period. Aquarius, I see. Okay. Who is the MK? Ah, oh, MK, MK. Yeah, Sun is the MK. Ah, okay. He's, uh... where, where, where does it go in D4? Yes, yes. It goes into Aquarius. Brilliant. <laughs> I, I, pred I predicted that he would get property in this period, and I used a sub period to t do the finer timing, and, and it turned okay. out to be it, it turned out to be correct. Okay, yeah. okay. So um, okay. this is an example of um, how um, we are using the MK in the appropriate divisional chart okay. to see how a particular period becomes eligible. Now I was coordinating this with, um, of course, with him Chotri as well because he had just moved into his Jupiter major period. Okay, okay. Who's in the Lagna of D4? Yeah, I mean, uh, Jupiter is in the Lagna. And okay, and, the Chatur Thamsha also is in the Lagna, okay. <laughs> well, it's in, the, it's in the Lagna of D4. That's the relevant yes. point. Any any planet that's in the Lagna of a divisional chart has a special eligibility to bring okay. events. I see. To bring, to bring events related to that division when you run that period. Yes, correct. So when I saw that he was moving into Jupiter in the, in the Lagna of D4, then I saw he was moving in, in Charadasha. It was Aquarius containing the MK. This clearly indicated um, the potential for getting property. Then it was just a question of in what sub-period. Right? And then this was the basis of my predictions here. Now, of course, I've been showing events that are happy events, desirable events, career-wise, <laughs> marriage, childbirth, property. Yeah. But of course, that's not life, you know. Life yeah, also, yes, yes, yes. Also, also holds some very unpleasant and unfavorable, undesirable yeah. events. And I don't typically make negative predictions, but in order to illustrate something about Jaimini, let me um, bring up this chart. And it's not someone I consulted with directly, a friend of theirs approached me and wanted to get my input about this because this friend of theirs was starting to experience some physical symptoms of which at first the doctors couldn't understand, um, uh, couldn't find anything, couldn't understand what was going on, okay? Okay. So I've told you that the GK represents all things related to the sixth house, which includes disease and illness, right? Mm, yes, correct. And, um, so when this person, uh, the friend, the friend of the friend, or not this person whose chart it is, but their friend asked me to look at the chart and give input about it. Um, I saw that they were running their Aries period. Okay. <clears throat> Who is in Aries? Yes, Venus, the Ganati Karaka. Now, it doesn't mean anytime you're running such a period, there's going to be a health crisis. It's more likely to bring a health crisis if there is additional malefic influence. Okay, okay. So you see all these planets in Aquarius. Yes. Which includes Mars and Saturn. Yes. Are aspecting the DK. Correct, correct, correct. And, you know, Dharakaraka can be, of course, we just have demonstrated, it can be used to, you know, be an indicator of spouse and time marriage, but... It's also the Maraka in the um, Jaime system because it's like the seventh okay. house, seventh Lord. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. So, um, you know, I didn't like this picture, okay? okay. Um, and I, I told them to take what's going on very serious. She should undergo a very thorough battery of tests. And unfortunately, what came out of that is that it was discovered that she had stage four cancer. 
oh, um, oh. And, and, and unfortunately uh, passed away. Oh, um, okay. Now, I, I don't want your audience to think anytime you're running the period of the GK that it means you're going to get deathly ill and die because <laughs> that's just not the case. Right? Yeah, was... uh, there, there were major other contributing factors here and it could also be seen in the Jamie system, but I want to show, show you a different kind of GK. Uh, I want to ask yeah. a question sure. here. This sure, sure. was there in my mind. So generally, you know, that's a fact of life, as you said, you know, we don't like negative things, but most of the times, you know, these things happen in life. So uh, now in this case, like Aries is containing the Gnati Karaka. So that, that's why there is a probability. But what about the signs which are ruled by the Gnati Karaka? So for example, you know, Taurus and Libra in this case. Yeah. Well, what you're asking me is that a sign that is the Lord, uh, that is has its Lord a special Karaka, can it yes. also bring, bring these things up? And the answer is yes. Okay. So, so in other words, if you are running the sign, in fact, I'll just show you a, a quick example of that since you asked the question, all right? Mm -hmm. um, but but then I want to, uh, you know, let me just bring up this chart. Um, this is a chart of a Russian student of mine. Okay. And, and uh, she just recently married. Okay. If you look down at the um, period and sub-period in Charadasha that she's running, well, first of all, who's the DK in her chart, birth chart? Oh, uh, sun. Sun. Okay. Which, which planet rules Leo? Um, okay. okay. So one of the reasons that it could be seen that Leo Leo would bring a marriage for her is because it's a sign ruled by the DK. Correct, correct. But there are additional reasons. If you look at Navamsha, you'll see that Leo is the seventh house of her Navamsha. Okay. Oops, I just did something I didn't want to do. Um, that was a mistake. Hold on. Um, I need to uh, get this uh, <laughs> rectified here. And now I need to get Karakas back up here. Sorry about this. Mm -hmm. No worries. Okay. So um, if you look at Navamsha, you'll see that Leo yeah. She married in she married in Leo Leo. You see, Leo is the seventh house. But if you use who's in if you who's in the seventh house from Leo, oh, dark dark okay. dark sun. Sun sun. Okay okay mm -hmm, okay. So th this is how it could be seen at this period. Okay. But you know, I said that the GK carries all the significations of the um, sixth house, including, and you'll see it comes into play in the charts of athletes who are involved in competitions. Okay, right. I see. With, with opponents, which is a, a sixth house indication. I'm going to bring up the chart of the very famous women's tennis player, Serena Williams. Okay, great. And, um, and you know, same periods can bring different things, both desirable and undesirable. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. So now you can see that since uh, 2015, age 34, She's been running Virgo. Okay. It contains her Amatya Karaka. Oh, uh, okay. It's with the PK. Yes. Which, form, which forms the Jaime Raja Yoga. It's also with the GK, right? Yes. Karaka, yes. Now, now, of course, you know, she's now about to retire. But, you know, this started back at age 34. And she was still at the very top of women's tennis and okay. winning, winning different events. Very predictable based on running this period of containing Amat Yakarak involved in a Jami Raji Yoga. Okay. But she also had a child during this period, PK. Okay, Saturn, I see. Okay. But she also suffered injuries, which have slowed down her career and why she's now, you know, near the end of her career. Um, uh, it contains the GK. Okay, okay. So these three third things, the fact that she continued to be, you know, a top ranked women starters, the fact that she had a child, the fact that she struggled with injuries, all of these could be indicated by the fact that the three different carcass that are in this sign, plus the fact that it's the sixth house of the birth chart. Ah, okay. That's another added factor, correct. 
Now, what's interesting is that she's playing her last tournament. She announced she's going to retire. She's playing in the U.S. Open. Okay. And she has she has won her first two events, including beating beating the second the person who the second seed, rather unexpected. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can you can see that this is happening in the um, Virgo Gemini period. So again, all the dual Rashi's are getting the yeah. influence of Are the they... giant mirage yogas and then look what she's running rahu mars who form raja yoga in the parashri system in the uh in the birth chart mm -hmm. okay. okay mars and rahu form a, a nodal what's called a nodal raja yoga there and um, mars is uh, so strong in her um Navamsha, it's not giving results to debilitated planets at all she first became the top ranked woman tennis player in the mars major period okay incredible Yes. So this is what I had to share with you today. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. And, and again, what, what I'm trying to uh, show here is the way in which predictions can be made using Chinese char carcass along with charadasha and how sometimes, not always, these events come out in a very simple, straightforward way. Can even be the potential for them can even be seen as a, at a glance. Yes, and this is the best part I like to you know. You have taken one rule, like one system, and explain most of the events, like you know, career, marriage, childbirth, and like problems, like you no know, litigation or uh, like health problems or whatever, competition, and all this. You know, I realized I wanted to show you one more thing because, um, you know, people around the world may not know this, but here in the US, what's making news headlines every day is the legal difficulties that the former U.S. president um, uh, is involved in. You know what? Um, my, my program just... Donald um, Trump. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that. We're going to have to save that for another time. But let me just say, <laughs> he's running the major period of a sign that has the GK afflicted. Okay, okay. And again, you know, GK can give success in athletic competitions, right? It can give illness, as we saw in the one chart, it can also, because it also relates to litigation, Sixth House, it can also get, get you involved in litigation, which he's up to his neck. It's like, yeah. something like eight different, you know, investigations going on right now. And he's, you know, got all kinds of legal difficulties at the moment. And the way in which that was predictable is that he's running the sign period of a planet containing the GK. Not just that, but it has additional affliction to it. Okay, so now how do we know if the GK is involved? You know, will the person succumb to it or come over it? So is there any well, way? Well, you want to see what's what's ahead, right? So, okay. Uh, okay. You know, if you want to see the outcome of it, you know, what periods are coming up or, you know, what periods sustain themselves and do the, it's just like when I was been predicting the outcome of presidential elections, um, you know, you want to see uh, the strength of both the charts, but then not just the time when, when I predicted that Bush would win over Gore in 2000, it looked so close as terms of the actual date of the election itself. And in okay. fact, it turned out to be the closest election in US history. But I was looking at when the inauguration would take place. You know, the, the election took place like in early November. Uh, if, if the person who would win would get inaugurated as president on the 20th of January. And it was looking at Bush's chart and the Dasha's then um, on the 20th of January that looked much stronger than Gore's. And it was on that basis that I predicted that uh, Bush, not Gore, uh, would win. So if you're looking for the outcome of something, sometimes looking at what the periods are coming up will tell you which direction things might go in. Right? I'm not saying it's easy. There's a lot of judgment involved, but no, that's how it's done. That's how it's done. Yeah. And have you made any assessment of the next presidential election in U.S.? Well, like... we don't, we don't, we don't really know. I don't do that until um, you know the the candidates are finalized. Okay. Um, you know, and that's uh, unknown at the moment. It, you know, whether it's going to be Biden again or he'll step aside and it'll be someone else, and who the Republican nominee will be. So um, I don't do that until that you know that's known. And usually the vice presidential candidates too, because in this last election. Where I predicted that Biden would win, would win the chart of the vice president uh, candidate Kamala Harris uh, came into play quite a bit. Um, yeah. It looked it looked really very strong for her, and it, it, it contributed to my prediction that the Democratic ticket of Biden and Harris would win. 
But, you know, if it comes time in 2024, I'll do it again. Um, so I just hope it's not Donald Trump again. Personal, <laughs> personal, personal opinion. So um, have we done what we wanted to do today? Yes, thank you very much, sir. It has been like amazing to see all the facets of life uh, through this. And uh, I would also be interested to know if you have any other, you know, courses going on, like physically where we can attend. Thank you. So, you know, people ask me all the time how they can learn from me. And one of the things you mentioned, I've written uh, uh, 26 book publications and 80 article publications, all of which are available on Amazon.com Kindle. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Right? Or if you, if you want print copies, it's harder for people in India, for example, to get those. Um, but they're available in print as well. Some of those can be ordered as PDF files through my website as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. My website's very simple. It's just uh, Mark Boney, um, www.markboney.com, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's very simple. Just my name, Mark with a C, yeah, all yeah. one word. And then, you know, at any one time, I'm always teaching online courses. Uh, right now, teaching a, what's called a Jaimini Level 2 course, not for beginners, but Level 2. And then, you know, we were talking about the fact that I'm coming to India yes. in, uh, in October. And in Chennai, there's going to be a four-day Jyotish intensive. The title is The Art and Science of Prediction. I'm going to be showing, wow. you know, how I make predictions using a combination of the Jaimini system and the Parashri system. It's a four-day intensive for people that are local or who want to travel from India and in parts from India. Um, it's an in-person course, but yeah. it's also going to, it's also going to be live streamed, mm. and so really anybody with an internet connection, if they're interested, you know, mm -hmm. they can uh, partake. I'll be making uh, recordings of all the sessions, so it's just not at a convenient time to yes. attend live. People can yeah. um, you know get the recordings. So those are some things coming up that I would mention. You were gracious enough to say that you're going to post a link where people can see uh, the details of this. Right? Sure, if they're, if they're I, I, I will. I, I will, especially about this course in Chennai. If uh, they can have the fortune to learn from you personally, why not? <laughs> so I will um, really put it down. If people are interested, that's fine. Yes, thank you so much, sir. It's uh, really great to have you. Uh, hope to have you soon again, uh, <laughs> very time soon. And You're welcome. Uh, I'm whoever, happy to uh, come again. Yes, and whoever has watched this entire episode, uh, it's an amazing episode. So please uh, thank uh, Mark Muni, sir, and shower your blessings upon him. And please let us know if you would again uh, like to see him, which I'm very sure you would. And please write in the comments, what would you like to uh, see again from him you know any specific topic or anything in general please let me know thank you very much sir uh, please have a well, namaste bye for yes namaste namaste